In the last lectures, we looked at symmetric matrices and we had already seen some first nice properties regarding their spectra. The first thing that we had seen is even if a matrix is operates on C and the complex uh, vector spaces, um, if it's a Hermitian matrix, then all its eigenvalues are real. And the other thing that we have seen is that eigenvalues or eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. And this, in fact, is not only true the second part for the uh, for complex valued vector spaces, but also for real vector spaces. Um, now, I w and we have already seen that if there is, um, if we have a symmetric matrix, it has at least one eigenvalue and one eigenvector then, of course. And now we want to prove what is known as the spectral theorem for symmetric matrices. This is really the most important theorem regarding symmetric matrices. Um, and this is going to save our lives in machine learning because without that theorem, we would be doomed. Like most of the methods or many, at least half of the methods I know probably would break down if that theorem wouldn't exist. So let me write, try to write down the theorem. Theorem. A symmetric matrix A that lives in R n times n, so we are over the real numbers in this case, is orthogonally, orthogonally Diagonalizable, diagonalize, diagonalizable, orthogonally diagonalizable. You can practice that to say that yourselves. Um, what does it mean? Is there exists a matrix, uh, there, there exists a basis such. If I don't close the windows, I'm going to suffocate in this room. It's going to be extremely hot if I keep the window open there's this truck driving back and forth all day and now I'm going to close the window okay there we go a symmetric matrix is orthogonally diagonalizable what does it mean there exists a, a basis um, and uh, an orthogonal basis um, in particular, such that the matrix that represents this linear operator consists just of, is in diagonal form, and all the basis transformations are also really nice. So let me just write it down. So there exists an orthogonal, and there exists an orthogonal matrix Q in R n times n and a diagonal matrix D also in R n times n such that we have A can be written as Q D Q transposed. Okay, so um, D is the diagonal matrix. Um, we have this orthogonal matrix Q, which does the basis transformation. Observe that the inverse of this orthogonal matrix is Q transpose, so I don't need to write Q minus one, here, Q to the power of minus one, here Q inverse, but Q transpose is fine. And so whatever my original basis was, I can transform it to this other basis. Um, uh, such that I have this form and if you want I just write down another way of writing this um, the same result you can write uh, let's just make a nicer sum sign it is the sum of i equals 1 to n lambda i q i q i transpose where lambda i are the eigenvalues and q i are the eigenvectors of this matrix Okay, so this is the real spectral theorem. It looks pretty harmless, but this is um, what it is. Now let us prove the theorem. Proof. And again, this is just going to be a sketch, but I want to give you the glimpse how it works. This is a proof that goes by induction. By induction 
on uh, n, which is the dimension of the vector space. I mean, this whole thing operates on a finite dimensional vector space. Observe that on infinite dimensional spaces, um, these kind of spectral theorems are not as simple as here. Um, yeah. Because a spectrum can be something that's much more complicated in an infinite dimensional space. A spectrum not only consists of eigenvalues and eigen like of a, a spec like an element in the spectrum does not necessarily mean that there is an eigenvector. Because in, in a finite dimensional space, what is so nice about finite dimensional spaces is that a mapping is invertible if and only if it's only if it's not injective. So it's not invertible if it's not injective and at the same time if it's not surjective. So these things are equivalent. In an infinite dimensional vector space, this goes wrong. So you could have different reasons why something is not invertible. It could be either because the thing is not injective, this leads to an eigenvector, or because it's not surjective and le that leads to something else. And that makes it much more complicated. But here we are in a really nice finite dimensional space. So, sorry, I, I lost trace of it. Um, we want to prove that real valued spectra theorem by induction, and n is the dimension of the vector space. So how does a proof by induction work? We first of all start with the base case. Uh, in our case, this is n equals 1. And for n equals 1, the theorem is pretty clear because then, like a symmetric matrix is just a linear number, it, it's just a number um, and everything is sort of, uh, here we just have, it is, we just multiply by a number and then everything here is sort of trivial. Um, so that's not the interesting case. What is interesting is the inductive step inductive step that takes us from, how did I do it, n minus 1 to n. Okay, so we start with, uh, we now want to prove, um, we have already proved for n minus 1 that this statement is true and now want, we want to prove it for n. So we start with observing that because A is symmetric by the previous proposition that we have seen, there exists at least one eigenvalue and eigenvector of A. This is something that we have already proved. So A is symmetric. Uh, this implies A has at least one eigenvector, which is called U. And with the outlaws of generality, we assume that the norm of U is one. Um, but that's maybe not so important for now. And now we can define the subspace that is spanned by u. So we define u is the span of this eigenvector lowercase u. And the subspace u is invariant under a. Invariant means if I apply a, then I end, like if I start with a vector in u and apply a, then I end up again as with a vector in u. This is a one dimensional space and uh, consisting of an eigenvector, so this is true, this is sort of the more or less very definition of an eigenvector. Um, okay, so far so good, so um, nothing really complicated yet. And now we consider um, the orthogonal complement of u consider the orthogonal complement of u and now we consider um, the restriction of the operator a on this orthogonal complement consider u and the restriction of a to u orthogonal so we simply want to apply a to vectors that come from this u orthogonal now the point is, um, on this subspace, um, this restricted operator is again a self-adjoint operator. And this is um, sort of the key ingredient here. Um, on U orthogonal, A is again a self-adjoint uh, so symmetric, if, sorry, I could also write, maybe I write symmetric. Operator. And it now operates on a space of dimension n minus 1. Um, and dimension of 
you orthogonal is n minus one. The latter case is clear because I mean we like the whole space is a direct sum of u and u complement. U has dimension one, so the the, the complement has to have dimension n minus one, so that's clear. But um, there is some work that you need to invest to see that A is again a symmetric operator. I'm not going to write this out here, I just want to give you the sketch. But because we know that, um, we can now use the induction hypothesis. Um, and then essentially we're done. Now um, apply the induction hypothesis on this lower dimensional space on this um, the space of dimension n minus one, and then essentially the induction hypothesis. Then essentially you're done. The induction hypothesis now tells you that on this lower dimensional space you have this decomposition, you have these eigenvectors, and now you can um, take the eigenvectors of this lower dimensional space. And there, and and add this last eigenvector u1 that we had constructed in the very beginning, and then we have a basis of the original space which does the job. Um, I simply write does the job. Um, of course, if you want to write it down properly, this is probably another page of writing down why it really does the job. Um, but I think it's reason the intuition is clear, and I don't want to spend that that one page. Okay, so this is the proof sketch, at least for the real valued spectral theorem. Um, and I want to stress again that this is really one of the most special theorems, in particular also for machine learning. So, what it says is first of all, the eigenvalues exist, that's the first property. They are real valued. I mean, okay, if, they are, if we talk about complex eigenvalues, they would exist anyways, but they exist, they are real valued. And the eigenvectors, if the, if the eigenvalues are different, the eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other. This is really um, an extraordinary set of properties. And in machine learning, we use that all of, the, all of the time. So when we do principal component analysis, it's applying this particular theorem. It's really, and when I learned it as an undergrad, so it took me two years of being a machine learning PhD student until I realized that the theorem that in German has a very obscure name and in mathematics people call it the Hauptachsen Transformations theorem or something like that. Um, nobody ever gave me the intuition and it took me a long time until I realized that this thing that I learned in my undergrad in math is what is PCA in machine learning. So this really is PCA or SVD if you want, but um, let's call it PCA here. And also, if it, like whenever we have similarity matrices or kernel matrices, um, this is going to be one of the key objects that we're going to operate, at least in standard um, machine learning outside of deep networks, then you always have symmetric matrices and, and there's, it's, it's hard to conceive any construction in machine learning that uses these kind of symmetric matrices and uses linear algebra but doesn't make, make use of this particular theorem. So it's really uh, one of the most important theorems that exists out there. And if you ca happen to be in my, my next term lecture on statistical machine learning, and if we happen to be able to do that lecture, not online, but in classroom, whenever we see a symmetric matrix, I'm going to ask you, what is the property of this matrix? And you're going to answer, it has a basis of eigenvectors, which are orthogonal to each other, and the eigenvalues are real valued. It is really, this is something you need to know um, you're not going to survive machine learning if you don't know that. Now there also exists a complex valued version of that theorem, which is um, now not so surprising anymore. I just write it down, the complex version of that uh, spectral theorem. So theorem, now we have a Hermitian matrix, Hermitian matrix. A in now C n times n is unitarily diagonalizable. What does it mean? So there exists a unitary matrix U and a diagonal 
Matrix, D, such that um, we have A is U, D, U, transpose, conjugate, and in particular, uh, the entries of D are real. So real valued. Okay, so this is, um, I think once we know the real spectral theorem, the complex one is not so surprising anymore. Um, we can diagonalize, I mean, the surprising thing is that the eigenvalues are all real valued, and of course that you can do it in this unitary way.